Alrighty. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another stream. And tonight I'm going to be painting. I actually found this cafe scene many months ago. I was trolling through my reference photos and I wanted to paint something a bit different tonight. And of course, it is still a street scene of sorts, but it's a slightly different orientation context, as you can see. You know, we've got... Uh, what I really like is that these, these nice umbrellas and darkness underneath the buildings. I actually want to change this up a little bit. Maybe, you know, even make the, the shade of this... You know, instead of this this darker color there, which I think is greenish, maybe I'm going to change it around, maybe make it red. We'll see how we go because, of course, uh, you know, the umbrella is also, a, you know, very warm color. So it would be good to have some kind of, yeah, cooler color in there. Like that green is tending towards cooler color, blue, that kind of thing. We've got Kathy in the chats, early bird. Yeah, this is, well, this is late for me. It's 10.40 p.m., but I think uh, we're about to you watching from Kathy. There's a few on uh, YouTube as well. Oh, sorry about that. I, my microphone, my microphone, uh, dropped out. I, every time when I move this microphone a little bit too much, I unplug the back of it, unfortunately. So, oh God, I was just rambling on about a few different things and can't even remember what I was talking about anymore. But, uh, yeah, I was basically just reading out some of the chats. I was talking about the where to start in the drawing with the building. So I might repeat myself there. So really, because there is no sky in this building, I'm just starting out by probably drawing in the easiest part of the, the scene, which I can sort of figure out, which is these signs. Okay, let's say Pantene. Does anyone know where this is? That's what I was asking before. If you know where this is, let me know in the chats because I can't... Um, can't figure out where this is. I think it's on Paris or something like that. Uh, how's the audio now? Can you hear all right? I've got Nerida Carter here in the chat. And Nerida, you know, this scene might be kind of familiar to you. Do you remember we did a line and wash scene with a similar cafe style like this as well? I think without the tree, just more of like shrubs and vines and stuff creeping onto the onto the building so yeah yeah I, I we did a line and wash one and i was really tempted to do this one in line and wash but i'm feeling a little bit lazy tonight in terms of actually getting in the the full line and wash drawing so let's you know let's do this one and also i'm using hot press paper and i'm really trying to challenge myself by painting some of my usual subjects but on hot press paper which is going to really create more contrast and uh, saturation with the colors but um you know challenge me as well because i tell you what 
it's a lot easier, certainly a lot easier painting on um, on uh, cold press paper. That's for sure. It's a lot easier. So that's that sort of shade there in the front, and we're going to put in some of these umbrellas here. There's one. And where does it come down? Roughly about here. Uh, okay. There's one. Let's get another one crossing over. They, If you look at them, they're kind of like semicircles, okay? Just draw them in like general semicircular like shapes like this, okay? Keep them spaced apart in different, you know, slightly spaced apart as well and vary the angle of them slightly. Here's another one and you can see it's a little bit higher, a little bit taller, okay? And... Thanks for letting me, yeah, thanks for letting me know, um, Foolish Juan, because, yeah, sometimes I just don't know if the audio is working or not, and we've got Dylan, how are you doing, Dylan? Dylan's, uh, uh, Dylan's one of the members of my other channel, and, uh, a friend who watches along, does, uh, watches my, my, uh, flashlight and electronics reviews on my other channel, so good to see you, Dylan, you found your way somehow into my watercolor channel tonight or uh today it must be daytime for you over in in uh, in europe how you doing dylan and now yeah narrative says it is in italy okay yeah you you, you know you're probably right you're probably right um I, I didn't take this photo so i have no idea where it is somewhere in europe most likely isn't it and uh, who else have we got here uh kathy says can hear you now Dylan says, ah, oh, Dylan says it's a picture, it's a cafe in my country, in Antwerp. Wow. So it's in, um, it's, it's in, uh, Belgium. You know, I wouldn't, wouldn't have picked that. We have no idea. Uh, I guess, you know, in, uh, in Belgium, you guys speak a few different languages, don't you? I know French, uh, you guys speak French. Is it a bit of German as well, or Dutch and something else? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. In in Australia, most people here we just speak one language. I can speak a bit of Mandarin because my parents taught me when I was young. But most Aussies, I would say, can only speak one language. We, there's really not much of a need for us to speak other languages here because most people just speak in English. But um, it's always, it's always uh, for me anyway. I'm, I get. I get very excited when I when I meet someone who can speak a few different languages because I just find learning other languages so so difficult, you know? It seems like you have that some people that can just pick it up so quickly and especially if you're a kid very very young as a child you can just pick up languages like anything but once you get to a certain age it just seems like uh everything's a, an, an effort to sort of cram into your into your brain. And it can be, it can feel like that sometimes, even when you're learning, when you're learning watercolors, if you're starting out a little bit later on in life, but you know what? A lot of people start out, uh, I can't remember which artist it was, but it was a very famous artist who only started out when he was about 40 or 40 to 50 years old. So, you know, there's always time, there's always time. And I tell you what, um, if you put in the, if you put in the effort to practice and and, uh, you know, even just a f half an hour a day, you're going to get there. This is a tricky scene because there's all these details underneath, obviously, with the with the umbrella. But there's also... Yeah, th there is also... Um, what you call it? Chairs and tables, all kinds of stuff in there as well. So, yeah, it's quite... It's quite full on. It's quite full on, but... As you guys know, I love trying to paint scenes that are a bit different. Okay, and uh, Dylan, I guess you guys are quite into your into your art as well, isn't it? Uh, English is not officially spoken in Belgium or teach uh, taught in schools yet. Everyone speaks it fluently. Maybe you guys are watching. How did you learn then? Did you learn through like movies or just? You know, just learning in general, like, you know, uh, watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. And, uh, okay, Dylan says it's called Elf de Gebod, meaning 11th commandment. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. What do you know? What do you know? 
Well, it's good to have you here, Dylan, because otherwise I'd, I'd still be wondering where this is. I find these a lot of these reference photos, some of them I take myself, but I haven't been to, to Europe for a very, very long time. Last time I went was sometime in, yeah, sometime in 2019. So if I ever get over there, Dylan, I'm going to I'm gonna call you up <laughs> and we can catch up. But uh, yeah, I prefer to take my own if possible because you can really just make up your own mind with the composition. Okay. So... You know, as you can see, I'm really, really going quite uh, loose with the details because I I want to you you know get in a, a, a you know a decent indication of what's going on, but I don't want this whole thing to just be about the drawing. I don't want to spend all day on the drawing as well. I did that in a couple of my workshops, and they never turn out so well when you are uh, hyper fixating like that at times because. Got a bit of hay fever, guys. I'm rubbing my nose a little bit because I'm yeah. I've got a bit of hay fever. We're gonna gonna continue on. Uh, oh, you've even got you got the address there, Leopold. Uh, what well, Strat. <laughs> Don't let me pronounce that. One two thousand Antwerp. And this is the address of the photo. <laughs> that's really, really, that's really um. That's really a precise, Dylan. And okay, you you walked past there last week when visiting a concert. Ah, so this is like your your stomping ground, eh? Um, Nerid is asking where can I find the reference photos there, event slash discussion. Um, I haven't posted the I haven't got the reference photo uploaded separately. But what I can do, Nerida, if I just enlarge this photo for you on the side, I'm going to upload it after the end of this workshop. But I will. Yeah, I'll just enlarge it a little bit and move the palette over to the side. Hopefully that sort of helps you out a little bit. Okay, I'm kind of going a bit off the cuff today, Nerida. We've got Serena here as well. Serena Van der Watt, good to see you. How do you guys, what do you guys think of the, the reference photo today as well? I, I wanted to do something, you know, I'm trying to say different, but it's, I guess, not so different from a lot of my other scenes as well. You know, underneath here, it's a lot of darkness, but the cool thing is, again, these, like tables and stuff there so i'm going to just draw in a few of the tables and to put them in as you can see i'm just putting in these little kind of rectangular kind of can you see that just a little bit of this rectangular thing there like that and behind the tables of course you're going to get chairs okay the chairs are going to i think do more to indicate what is going on that this is a cafe rather than the actual uh, tables but we'll see how we go we also need to put people in here there's a you know like a waiter a waitress there maybe behind that table you know we've got a person sitting here like that and you really guys you really just have to use your imagination with this one especially in the darker areas now this tree i love how this tree now some of you might hate this but i love how this tree kind of cuts in front of a few things here and goes all the way through the scene like that. It kind of like, it's, it's almost a bit disruptive, but because it's in the edge of the scene, kind of in the, one of the, the left sides rather than the center of the scene, I don't know. I think it makes it look a bit more interesting. And in fact, it, it is a bit of a focal point of what we're, of this entire scene. So, um, so, so where, where some might see it as a bit of a nuisance, that's what actually drew me to this scene in the first place. The light source in this scene as well is a bit weak, as you can tell. It's difficult to kind of figure out whereabouts the light is coming from. I know it's coming from above, and it's probably an overcast overcast day. You guys probably have better weather over there at the moment than us in, in Melbourne, Dylan. We've just we've, we've basically just got uh, weird weather here in Melbourne. It's hot and cold. Today it's cold. Yesterday it was really hot. Or the day before, I can't remember anymore. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a kind of overcast day, which means the shadows are going to be soft underneath. And that might actually be an excuse for me to change the light source and make it a touch stronger. But uh, look, let's let we'll decide that later in the later on. I'm drawing some of these tree branches, and notice how the branches go over to the left of the scene, they go over to the right of the scene, okay, and this creates 
connectivity okay it connects up the left and right of the scene but now i see some imbalance and the imbalance is essentially in the front of the scene you can see there's the road kind of like roughly here is where the road is but because we've got this large shape going up i believe we now need uh, perhaps some figures walking in the foreground let me just draw one in here okay uh, and uh, it's going to be kind of difficult actually to get in the the details of this figure uh, yeah especially out here because I've not left much foreground I've only left a tiny little bit of foreground but this is going to be important I think anyway to kind of balance the scene out a little bit more if you know what I mean okay because we've got something going up there and so something here needs to balance that up I, I don't really know how to explain it and for some of you you might think this is this is rubbish you might think don't put that there but um, everyone you know I think composition is something that is quite unique to artists because it's a conscious decision making process it should be a conscious decision making process where you are deciding to omit or add details to emphasize others to subtract or downplay other others, change up some areas based on your individual preferences and your experiences. So for me, I really like the idea and the, 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 the impression of different figures, different people, like a busy looking scene, you know, and I really like drawing figures in there. And so that's what I want it. I want a bit of focus on those people down the bottom. But for some of you, you might think, I don't want that. So you might be more known later on if you end up, you know, being, uh, you know, creating your own, uh, you know, lots of masterpieces and, and what have you. You might be more known for your buildings, you know, maybe your windows. Now, I've seen some artists that are obsessed with windows and the detailing of, of the windows. You know, I, I can't be bothered. <laughs> you know, I just want to put the window in there and, and have it done with, you know let it be kind of over with uh, okay so the, like again as I said there's so many of these tables and chairs and what have you in here let's put in another one here there's another table like roughly here and maybe here let's put one here okay um, yeah I love these cafe scenes that you know just out in the you know nice lively sort of cafe scene like this and you know these chairs of course are empty there's doesn't really look like there's anyone sitting in these chairs at all is there just that one there the back of the chair there uh and, and to be honest that doesn't really look a whole lot like a chair if i'm i, I need to be a bit more detailed in them perhaps just to because it's only a few lines, if you think about that chair, it's only a few lines. So you don't have much to, you really don't have much to go with. But you have to indicate them somehow. You know, this could be a person just sitting behind the table. Um, legs underneath the table like that maybe. Uh, you know, there's some people just standing underneath this umbrella here in the back. So I'm just putting in a couple of people. You know, just having a chat maybe out the back like that, have their legs coming down behind the table, okay? You may or may not decide to do this or not. There's people sitting in the background as well, okay? Just a simple indication of that out in the background. More tables, more chairs. The chairs, I think, are probably the most important part because they, they really just imply that... Uh, that cafe sort of scene okay so be intentional with the lines that you're using for the chairs i mean it doesn't take much guys just a few little marks i'm running out of lead in my pencil uh oh it's kind of just keeps breaking off all right there's one um there's another person here, just sort of sitting across the table, maybe, and uh, on the chair, uh, like that. Maybe just sitting there with legs like this, okay? And, you know, I'll put another chair in front like that, just to cover that 
section up. It's a little bit messy, I have to say. That's not the best. It's uh, it's not my best sort of drawing work, but it is uh, it is something. It is something in there. Now they've got these like pot plants or whatever, like a squarish plant, pot plant kind of thing like that. So yeah. Uh, let's have a look at how, how we guys doing how we guys doing in the chats um let's have a look let's have a look at the chats uh speaking of concerts uh holy Schwine is saying there's a big one this weekend in melbourne oh yeah yeah you know what i've not gone to a concert for a really long time i i'm just i'm just uh I don't know, maybe I'm a bit of an old soul or something like that, but like this, like a huge, you know, it's like football games, you know, stuff like that. I, it's so many people in one spot drives me nuts. But uh, yeah, every now and then, do get out with some friends. You see the, uh, Dylan saying, you see the Stella, uh, a Stella sign above the entrance. That's pure Belgian beer. <laughs> Yeah, that's a popular popular beer here in Melbourne, actually. Yeah, ten degrees Celsius and raining. Yeah, things about twenty here today in Melbourne. Amanda Hahn from Victor Harbour. How are you doing, Amanda? Welcome back. We've got Islay as well. Good to see you, Islay. And we've also got uh, Tony Tone. Uh, and I think you're from Norway, aren't you? I've I've got your I think you're written you're writing in Norwegian. I've got to click the kind of translate button to see you know to see what you're saying. Uh, looks okay. So the translation is like I think the picture would have a look flat without the tree. I also like the organic shapes against the buildings. Yes, yeah, that's a really good point. The org, you know having some kind of uh, mixture interweaving of nature. Of nature and man-made objects you know buildings I don't know what it is about that but there's something magical when they both combine together in you know in a way that seems quite natural okay I'm just putting in a few little you know little branches coming in from the right hand side while I'm here as well let let's do this window here this rectangular window sort of it, where is it? It kind of comes up there like this. Um, not bad. Though I do think it, it kind of almost gets in the way of that branch a little bit. So the way around it is, again, integrate that branch. Integrate that branch downwards. Um, and let it cross over in the window. Don't fight it. There And there it looks a little bit more natural. You know, I'm almost tempted to get something coming out the side of the tree here as well like another branch um yeah let's leave it for now let's leave it for now uh but you can experiment a little bit with this kind of stuff there's no rules there's absolutely no rules uh here's the window coming down the side going up you know out of the scene that's a window there you know and again just touches on to the to the this, this little tree as well it's like a window and balcony up there what a nice little spot to live in uh, i wonder if the owner of this cafe lives up the top there is it a, i wonder if it's a it's a thing over in europe that's what i hear you know they of, often they own like the top parts of the building and they come down uh you know come down and uh into the shop i mean how how nice would that be well Maybe not if you're living so close to work, but I guess it's convenient, that's for sure. Alrighty, so um, we have, you know, a bit of architectural detail here, but honestly, there's not much to do on the building. I mean, I'm just scratching away a few details here for the another window. Okay, like that. That's a window. Um, but apart from that, oh yeah, that's that. Yeah, here's the stellar sign, Dylan. I think that's what you're talking about here. Yeah, you really, you really know this uh, this part of town pretty well, don't you? I don't know. I might admit that it's kind of a bit. <laughs> it's kind of getting in the way. I'll have to put it in with some gouache afterwards over the top. I reckon that's going to be that's going to look better. 
uh, rather than drawing it in with pencil first. Okay, okay, so let's see. What else do we have? We have a few other people, a few other figures, another kind of chair here. Let's get in this chair and the back and the front of the chair like that. Maybe a table, another chair here, there in the background. You know, a lot of this stuff, again, is just like a, a bit of a touch and go situation guy here in his laptop it looks pretty pretty busy there on his laptop you know there's more chairs you know look simplify that down there's a table here as well one table here to the right hand side um couple of mates maybe walking into the scene there i'm kind of thinking should we have another person like a little bit closer like here why not why not have someone a bit little bit closer like that uh, I don't know what this person is doing. Kind of looking to the side or whatever. There. But these these guys look like they might be going in, going into the scene, walking through anyway. Uh, like that. Okay. And a few more of these chairs, and I think we should be done really with the drawing. I don't want to 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 get too obsessed with this, just because I want to start. I really want to get started with the painting show you just how easy it is to get this impression of what's what's uh, going on Alrighty, righty so i think that's it i think i'm quite happy with how that looks as a sketch okay and when you're sketching for watercolors you always have to remember it's a bit different than when you're drawing as a primary sub as a primary medium you're just drawing because you don't want to you only just want to get in just enough detail to imply and mark out some of the details in here, but you don't want to overwhelm with with the pencil work. Okay, it's just a it's just a blueprint. Okay, there we have there we have it. We've got the we've got it. I'm going to reduce the size of that reference photo now, just so that I can get more of my palette in because I think that's going to be more important for you guys to see a little bit of. A little bit of the mixing here on the right hand side of the scene and uh all right how are we all doing everyone amanda's amanda's got a few comments as well and uh narada says sketching sketching a small a5 drawing along with you awesome narada I, I thought you might be interested in this one i haven't seen you in some of my workshops recently I, i'm been assuming you've been busy or you know with uh life you know, there's lots of things going on, I guess. Not just in the world, but, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, good to see you. And, uh, yeah, who else is sketching and painting along? Let me know. Amanda which says, will be fun to add a couple of dogs near the people at the tables. Yeah, yeah, you know, that could definitely could be a thing. Um, I, I'm, so, I'm painting just so loosely. I'm drawing so loosely at the moment. But um, it could be like a... I don't know how I would imply this. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see later, but that's definitely a good idea. And Gail, good to see you, Gail. You're new to this workshop, these workshops as well. Welcome today. And, and Gail and anyone else who's watching, if you have questions, leave them down in the chats. I'll get to you. This is a great opportunity because I'm live. I'm here to answer your questions. So make use of that. You know, if you need, if you have anything that you need help with, ask away. It's something that you, I find, you know, it's very hard to find people who are doing these these workshops, uh, live workshops, because one, it's quite, I think for a lot of artists, it's quite stressful because you're having to focus on too many things at the same time. I'm used to it because I've done like over a hundred of them now. So I feel like things are, things are sort of a little bit more easier to multitask. I've got the tech stuff working at the moment, so it all seems to be good, but yeah definitely ask away guys it's a great opportunity it's, it's a rare opportunity I, th I think given that there's not many people who do these especially free ones as well so i'm going to go ahead and let's put in some of the color and i'm going to start right on the top of the scene here with this building and i know it's yeah it's actually white in this scene but i want to put in a little bit of like grayish color a bit of it, this is this is white as well. This is a bit of titanium white, okay. So it's not complete, you know, completely just the uh, 
the white of the paper showing through. I do, we do have some other kind of bits and pieces in there. And you know what? I might change that later. Might uh, darken it a little bit. Who knows? But for the time being, I want to try to preserve as much of that lighter color of that building as possible. But of course, you know, with a bit of this darker darker sort of titanium white mixed in with a bit of gray it gives it a touch of volume okay rather than it just being completely stark and, and white all the way through now the building to the right hand side and i'm using hot press paper as well guys so keep in mind that the paper i'm using is it's not like hot press uh, cold press paper which is so i find a lot easier to paint on because it's got all these little texture uh, bits of texture in there which really helps to get a to create smooth washes it's difficult to do this on hot press paper it's my new kind of challenge that i want to do because when it works out it works out very well but it's not easy because uh, the paint dries in kind of mottled areas and pools as well it's just quite funny but uh yeah, light wash, and here it's just basically a bit of 10% mix of yellow ochre, okay? And if it goes over, see how it goes, I'm putting some of it over the, the green, these little shrubs, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all, because um, if we mix a bit of, if we mix a bit of blue in it, it's going to turn green anyway. So this is just a way to get in all these warmer colors. What else do we have, you know? We want to make this all kind of connect downwards and not only that we have you know we have a a bunch of what what we got back here like umbrellas as well and drop in some high contrast high saturation colors this is yellow just pure yellow okay and this is what i'm saving these colors for these like highly saturated colors for putting them in on like the the umbrellas and things because i tell you what if you try to do it afterwards um yeah if you try to do it afterwards you're going to probably have a lot a, a lot of hard have a lot harder time putting them in there put them in while everything else is hasn't been painted yet okay look at that that's a bit of golden color on that one you know why not put in a bit of green i don't like using too much green at the beginning because geez i mean you, you can accidentally mix this in and it turns into a a mess um you end up painting some of the other stuff so make sure you dry your brush off after you use green so that you don't end up accidentally mixing it to some of the yellows you know what's this one here over here i'm going to mix a bit of titanium white with the touch of um yellow bit of golden kind of yellow color like this there we have it and you know just to make a duller sort of conacridone gold umbrella and and serena's ask uh, saying maybe put the name of the cafe in yeah we could do that we could do that let's let's uh let's let's, let's give that a go I, I reckon i'll actually do it at the end with some gouache it's going to be easier than just cutting around the whole thing it's uh I think that's easier. Foolish one's asking a question. Did you restock your cold press uh, recently? Yeah, recently asking if I restocked my Coke recently. Um, you, uh, you've run out a couple of days ago. Yes, yeah, I I have restocked it. I have restocked it. But this is a this is a funny thing, you know. I the, the start the reason why I started painting on hot press was because I ran out of cold press, and this was sometime last year because I only use hot press for very detailed paintings like portraiture but i've started to just try to use it as a challenge for some of this stuff here which is uh yeah just like in normal landscape slash street scenes and i don't know just for a change you know you see sometimes you just get bored using the same paper over and over again and this is frustrating to paint on. I'll tell you that. It's, it's frustrating because it, it dries in kind of weird mottled kind of manner. And uh, it's difficult to control. But, but it's kind of, it, it's rewarding when it, when it works out. Okay, it's a very high contrast sort of scene. You know, in the background, all I'm doing, you, this is what you have to do. You look at the background and just 
kind of squint a little bit and just think, okay, this is just a bit of yellow there. For example, that's just a bit of yellow behind there, you know, uh, like a warmer color. Who knows what that is? It's a warmer color, but I'm going to cut around that umbrella like that, leaving a bit of white, leaving a bit of color behind the figures, uh, in on the figures as well. Okay. But just a little bit of that. And looking at the general color and the general value, whether it's light or dark behind that area. Okay. And just going for it. Okay. We want to put in some type of layer of color behind this because there's no darks in there right now. This is just the first layer. So as you notice, it's a lot of warmer colors and lighter colors going on back there. All right. And this is going to make it a lot easier certainly to um to create that that uh, backing bit of backing color there a bit of warmth running through this area and i'm going to bring it all the way down it comes all the way down into the ground as well so let's you know this is yellow ochre guys just a bit of yellow ochre i i'm using yellow ochre because it is not very vibrant which means i'm able to uh, yeah, I just don't want to make it too vibrant. I, like the last painting I did, I think I went overboard with the vibrancy. Okay, I wanted this to look kind of natural, more realistic with the colors. And um, as we move downwards down to the page, I'm just mixing a little bit of titanium white in here. Okay, and perhaps a touch of gray. I do have a little bit of gray left over on the palette. Let's drop in a bit of that gray here onto the ground. So it just looks a bit more like the road, you know, like a road color. And I'm trying to blend this on with the yellow up the top as well. Okay, like this. So that it just comes all the way down. And we have a nice seamless blend, which is difficult to achieve on, let alone cold press paper. But on hot press paper is a nightmare. I just never know what it's going to do it. But it sometimes ends up kind of mottled, that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and, um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and do some other bits and pieces now. Let's put in some, uh, yeah, oh, actually, let's decide what are we going to do? What are we going to paint the top of this? Uh, I don't know. What are we going to paint the top of this thing, this, um, this shade, this main shade? You know, should we go, I was, I was really thinking just to make the whole thing like a dark red color to be honest what do you guys think I'm, I'm actually yeah i'm i'm actually a little bit confused now on what to do it because i, I although the green is nice yeah the green or, or whatever that color is because i'm for some of you who don't know i'm actually partially colorblind i'm red green colorblind so you know if i can paint watercolors i'm sure you can too um this thing here i am going to go with some red let's just go with the red I'm I'm going to just go with it, yeah, because uh, I don't know a, a darker red. This is this is a um, I'm just winging it, okay. Might be a mistake. Dark sort of red, and it's basically um, it's basically a perylene red. All right, perylene red. And the shade underneath there is actually a little bit darker, so I can drop in a bit of neutral tint and just create a bit more extra darkness at the base um, of this shade. And hopefully I can blend a little bit. Darren, just let's do this without stuffing it. All right, there we have it. Um, you know why I'm using red as well? Because I'm hoping that the red is going to contrast a bit with the green. And I've made a little mistake already. I've forgotten to get in this left side of the of the shade, which is the same color. So here we go. Let's go back in there. Hopefully that doesn't is matching the right color. And it's difficult when you try to mix the same color. It's you know what? It's actually impossible to mix the exact same color in water in watercolors. Because there are just infinite permutations of color that you can mix and that's the one of the strengths in fact of watercolor the 
um, the, 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 the different shades that you can mix, the subtleness of, of these shades, absolutely amazing, but also frustrating as anything <laughs> if you're trying to get in this you know a particular value or match a particular value so that's a sh look that's the shade i'm actually i actually don't mind that i actually don't mind that okay and you know i did say that i'm using 10 percent paint but you know here below i'm using that 50 percent paint 50 percent water with a bit more of the neutral tint added in there in order to darken down that the edge of that shade and we'll have to uh emphasize that a bit more now the you know, look at this, just drop in a bit of green. This is a bit of a color called undersea green. Look, it doesn't matter what kind of green you use, guys, as long as you've got a mixture of light and dark greens in here. I've noticed this, you see on the on the left side of this tree, it's kind of more lighter, lighter values, lighter sort of green. So I'm mixing a new little bit of cronacridone gold in with this green like that, okay? And on the right-hand side, I will put in some darker green here, like this. Okay, can I, let's see if we can just, this this bit of like red has begun to sort of dry off a little bit, but you know what, it's actually not 100% dry, but I can mix in, as you can see, a little bit of that, the, the right hand side of the tree, the green of that tree, okay. And remember, this is still a kind of lighter wash. I want to go over that tree another time. So don't go too dark here. You know, just a little bit of it, you know, climbing up the building and, and stuff like that will do. Okay, actually coming out maybe here as well. Again, this is compositional decision, uh, composition, a decision on composition. Jeez. So, you know, drop in a bit there as well. Why not? Just thinking, what do you want to do, Darren? What do you want to do? Well, I actually want to create more contrast with some of these umbrellas, but still have that nice, beautiful kind of lighter green, perhaps running in for the left-hand side. Okay. So I reckon I'll leave that for the time being. We'll go into it afterwards, do some more stuff afterwards. While we while we got the green, let's again drop in some more green here for this kind of shrub climbing up the tree, like a vine or something like that there. And this is a technique I call, uh, well, I don't call, but it's called scumbling. And how do you, what is it really? Well, you are just basically trying to move the brush around in erratic motions to generally signify a subject, an object. And I do this by holding the brush at the end, kind of dibbing and dabbing the brush around in different areas in order to paint. And this helps in in order to get in a looser representation of what you want to paint. And so you don't overthink things. You know, for example, there is a plant here. Check this out. There's actually a, a little plant here. I, I almost didn't notice it, like a bit of green. There's one it's actually like a darker green, in fact. Let me mix a bit of new, uh, blue in it, you know, here. Bit of, like, a sh you know, another something like that there. Keeping it light as well. Uh, okay, okay. What else do we have? Um, all right, all right. I think that's looking okay. I think that's actually looking pretty okay. Uh, so this... Also, this tree, let's get in a bit of brown. I've got a bit of brown ochre. Drop that in. How does it look? Um, yeah, it's like grayish brown, isn't it? It's not really a very, very browny kind of color. It depends on the photographer as well, what they've done. Um, oh, I've got this other. Let's mix this stuff up. This is better brown this is like a brown ochre here um i want to i want to like make this tree perhaps a bit more brown than it actually looks in the scene and we're making it lighter a little bit light um as well we don't want it to be too dark because uh the, the whole point of this tree i think anyway is to kind of imply that it's in front in front of this scene 
And um, one the best way to do that is either, it, yeah, basically make it a little bit lighter so that it appears that the light is kind of catching onto the side of it. But you know what? When I go through later with, uh, well, you know what? Probably do it now. You know, I was going to say I'll, I'll go through later with some darker marks, but um, I'll get in a quick little background of of this of the the brown on on the branches. But what I'm going to do is while I'm here, guys, and it's all about efficiency as well because I'm trying to do this pretty quickly, make it all you know, you know, paint as much as I can at the same time why not just get in the branches, these dark sort of branches in at the same time? And I've got a rigger brush. Okay, check this out. Bit of a little rigger brush like that. And uh, I can paint in a little bit of these little, see these tiny little striations on the tree? Okay, they're so subtle. Um, but as we move up into the tree, you can see like the actual branches and stuff, they become... Uh, yeah, they become a bit more, uh, what you might call it, darker. Like this. So I can just drop in more of this darker value. It's really just like a, a black color. Okay. But there is a touch of brown in there. Using a small round brush now for this. Okay. And, and guys, because I'm more so sketching tonight I uh, uh, tempted to detail a lot but uh, I want to just get this one done okay so you can see a bit of scumbling going on with the with the tree branches okay this one extending all the way out to the left that I had tried to extend out a bit before yeah um, let's put in maybe some smaller little striations with this uh, tiny little rigger brush, okay? And this really uh, is a godsend with the details because I'll tell you what, it's really hard to get small marks on the page um, for these little branches, okay? For it to still look half decent. Um, while I'm here, the window, check this out. Let's get this window in. Maybe a bit of blue or something up the top as well. Just like want to add some blue or something here. Okay, and there we have it. We've got a window or something or another out the back like this. All right. Window to the right here as well. Um... And you know this window actually has has a has a uh, advertisement on it. Doesn't matter. I'll just imply that window generally in darker color. Uh, there is an advert and a window behind this tree as well. Can we get this one in? Why not? Why not? Um, you know I'm always trying to find ways. To make it more efficient and just paint everything and get it to combine together because it's going to look more organic that way guys than just uh yeah it's going to look a lot more organic this way if if some of the edges blend together the this side of the the window is like a little bit uh, darker uh, sorry lighter the right hand side i don't know i'm just putting in a bit of lighter lighter section on the right side of the but you know I'm gonna have to probably outline that a bit more afterwards um what else do we have you know there's some details on the building as well let's leave that stuff later uh, or should we you know here we go let's kind of get in a few little marks running upwards maybe Ooh. okay there we go just some upward marks like I don't know what exactly this is, but it's just like the architecture of the building, perhaps. Um, might regret that later. Main thing is just getting in some of those windows. You can see one here as well, you know, behind this tree. You know, again, just darkening that, that window 
there on the right hand side and this one goes all the way up as well like that um a oh, bit more brown in there it's just too kind of bluish in there too sort of bluish so a bit of brown that might be a good idea just balance it out a bit um, and you know here you've got these little you know balustrades or whatever or the balcony like that look the the little rigger brush I mean it's just perfect for this type of stuff okay and that wash is still kind of wet so I can get in a bit of that the, the, the impression of the balcony a bit better with this um, two more windows to the left of the building okay just an impression of them not much not much going on there at all uh, the buildings to the right you know let's paint in the windows one window here another window here to the right okay if I can just simplify this as well okay um, good 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 now let's put in let's start working halfway through the scene and moving down the page and really get in the rest of the darks especially below the scene and we should really be able to finish this one off uh, and I'm having a look at the chats how are we doing let me let me uh, know if you have any questions guys I do see there's about 15 20 people watching so leave a comment if you if if you're new or if uh, you just you know you're watching along again the, the second third time let me know where you're from and uh tone says my first experience with hot press was surprising dries in a weird way and wasn't happy with the picture until the next day the paper seemed to save the pain yeah it's oh god i don't know how to describe it it's like it, it's love hate sort of thing isn't it because you get so much vibrancy but you sacrifice control you sacrifice control with uh, these wet and wet washes things de details just all melt and blend together and you get also dry very strange sort of mottled patchy sort of areas as well um yeah i think it's because when the paper dries it it doesn't stay completely flat you just have bits that pop out bits then pop down and as a consequence water just pulls in certain areas so but I look I think it's really worth it guys if you if you are looking to experiment with a bit of hot press paper um, it's great fun okay look this is just a bit of now green bit of undersea green that I'm using again in this area to what am I doing well I am trying to get in some darkness darker sections uh, in these trees maybe i don't know just just need to really mix up some proper green here i keep uh picking up some brown and stuff like that accidentally okay but the idea is to just flick the brush through leave some of that previous wash because that's going to indicate some light coming through unfortunately this bit here, um, the red of that shade or whatever, is just getting in the way. <laughs> it's just melt. It's just mixing together too much. So I'm just trying my best to work out a way to get in as quick as I can a bit of this darker section of this uh, these leaves and whatever. You know what? The fan brush might have to come out, guys. The fan brush. A little bit of this fan brush. Which is uh, kind of a... It's a trick. But you know what? It kind of works. So I am going to just go with it. And, you know, around the... Around the... Uh, the umbrellas as well is also an opportunity for you to do a touch of cutting around. Okay, like this just to bring out the details of the umbrella more 
make them a bit more sharper like that so that they just separate out from the trees at least whatever going on in the background um bit here as well and this will be the final little bit of darker color for some of these shrubs uh i will normally spend a bit more time especially if this is a line and wash scene i, I do spend a lot more time on on this uh on these trees to just uh, make them more more detailed it's also quite tricky on this cold press hot press paper i don't know why i do this to myself it drives me nuts um now i've forgotten to do this this is like a, some tree branches coming in from the right hand side can you see that i've just forgotten to put these in before so we can just go ahead and put in a bit of this like this here um you know, I think this is a good idea because it helps to join up the left and right hand side of the scene. You know, I, I was also thinking to myself, should I put in another? There's something that just bugs me about this tree, and I think it's because there. I, I think that there should be another branch or something coming off the right hand side like this. Um, uh, maybe it kind of just helps to balance out that tree a bit more, you know, like that. And because it's, you know, I can also lift off. See here, I'm just lifting off a bit of that darker paint to imply that that tree branch is kind of going through a little bit. So some of this sort of, uh, what do you call it, improvised, improvised kind of stuff like this. Okay. Makes the scene look more interesting, guys. I, I think so anyway. Um, especially when you got like this darkness running through the, like the window, a little bit of water will lift off that darkness and suddenly you can just imply like a bit of a branch or something in there. Um, this top one didn't quite work out so well, but no issues there. I'm just going to go with it. Um turned out a little bit messy to be honest with you but um i reckon i can fix that up a bit later on um yeah i can fix that up a little bit later on anyway um uh, lift off yeah that's all right that maybe yeah it makes it makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional doesn't it let's i'm gonna do this let's just try this i'm gonna put a bit of water onto this left side of the tree maybe bring that branch out as well here to the left running through this patch of mess it's too early actually because it hasn't dried yet so it's not doing the same thing as, as, as i want as on the other side but um uh, that's i kind of got the a good idea of that so far i will go back to it in a bit um i've got to keep this light i've got to keep this See, you're really going to keep the, the side of this tree light. If you go lift off a bit of paint like I'm doing here. And, and this is another advantage as well of using hot press paper. Um, lifting off becomes a lot easier. Because uh, hot press paper, for whatever reason, I think the sizing just... It, there's a lot of sizing on it. And the sizing sits on top of the paper, which prevents the water from seeping through which makes it easier to lift off. So, you know, the tree now looks a tiny bit more realistic, in my opinion, maybe, you know, a little bit better. And hey, and Dee's here as well. Good to see D saying, looks great. And Amanda says, red and white striped. Red and white striped. Um, yeah, like you mean the, an umbrella or something like that, or the, or this, this shade here. Maybe. Pearl says, middle of the night here. Technically early morning. I'm a night owl, but I wanted to pop in and say this looks great. Wish I could stay up to watch it, but I'm uh, psyched to come back and watch the replay. Uh, awesome, Pearl. Uh, this is your, your videos are always great. Thank you so much for being so generous with your content. Um, yeah, you know, that was one of my aims in the beginning to create a lot of free content out there. And um, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really quite 
lucky and really I feel quite privileged that uh, I have you guys here to support me, even if it's just watching along, painting along and and engaging with me as I as I paint. It's uh, it's been a great great journey and and um, I always want to make sure anyone watching along dedicating your time here i just want to make sure it's worth your while so definitely you know guys ask questions share what you think and i'll always do my my very best to to help answer your questions and get back to you okay so guys we have um we have like this tree we have you know, some of this stuff going on. Now, what we want to do is mix up a darker color. And I've really got myself a few already, just like a ultramarine blue and a perylene red. Ultramarine blue, perylene red creates a nice purple color. More blue means more kind of a darker purple and a little bit of um yellow i'm just thinking what to yellow should i use i'm going to use some of this quinacridone gold actually i don't know if this is actually going to mix all right uh, i normally use other types of uh yellows this is not really a proper yellow um okay it's mixed a kind of funny reddish god it's a really weird color isn't it, it looks like um it's almost like a like a dark oxidized blood color that's a really strange color you know i'm just going to use it i'm just going to go with it anyway maybe let's put some purple in it i just that's so strange um yeah it's interesting when you mix different kinds of colors different kinds of primaries together the the grays that you get can vary so drastically but i think this might work okay because uh, we've got a lot of red in here anyway so it just will create a bit more harmony color harmony on well, i'm hoping um so darkness under here i'm trying to simplify this down guys and um just put in some basic details for like the underside of this building let's bring this down like this cut around the umbrella here okay like this um you know what this this should have maybe a bit of darkness here as well yeah let me just try to cut around that a bit like that a bit of darkness around the shade here oops darker i'm gonna need some neutral tint in here i'm gonna cheat a bit of neutral tint okay i want this line to be crisp really crisp around that uh around that shade super dark to 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 um draw out make that light look even more uh bright because it's difficult enough already because that the shade is actually quite dark um because i didn't want to get it in like a really like too light too much light reflecting off it okay so in order to create the illusion of light everything around the lit object must be significantly darker which is what i'm doing here i've mixed up neutral tint with a bit of this kind of reddish neutral reddish uh, gray color i don't even know what to describe that color but you know, i think it's working okay as long as you got yourself a dark color, that's all you need. Yeah, don't overthink it. Um, you know, in the background here, look at that. I'm just cutting around some of this, these umbrellas, and under here, it, it's it's certainly tricky because you're also trying to leave out bits and pieces too, so that it's not all just um, complete darkness under there, and in fact it varies in in intensity like the 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 darkness under there varies in intensity so you got some of it that's really quite dark and then you got some other darks that aren't really like maybe around here like here under this sort of i don't know what this is it's some kind of sign or whatever okay 
and this is like a, a bit of the yellow for the wall. And so I don't want to really interfere much with that. I've kind of I put my, my grubby finger in there and I've, I've kind of moved it around, unfortunately. But um, see, underneath this umbrella, in the middle here, there's a kind of like a yellow column. So I don't know, just leave a bit of a bit of uh, of that previous wash in there. If you paint all of this in, like dark, you're going to have a difficult time uh, implying extra details. Okay, so notice that also some of it goes up into the umbrella. See, check this out, like this little, little kind of it, like that. I don't know how to describe it, but like these little thing of those splits in the umbrella, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call them. Okay. And this is also not as dark, but ah, uh, no, no worries. I will soften this color down, lighten it a little bit as well as we go down. Okay. As you can see, I'm varying the value of that gray. So it's not all the same gray running all the way through. And if you really want to if you really want to get technical, you can also mix other types of grays. You can mix like a cooler gray in some parts as well. And uh, yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I'm just trying to create a bit of darkness around these areas, but still leave in some of that previous wash. Um, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's just like touch and go um, hoping for the best that this kind of turns out still looking like umbrellas and it's just like preserving that yeah preserving some of the light on those umbrellas is so important you know even underneath this umbrella it's like there's darkness under there a little bit of darkness and then you know of course you've got more Darkness running to the right here. Okay. Um, Foolish Wine saying, a little concerned about those scribbles on the top right-hand corner. Yes, yes, we might have to fix those up. I was uh, a bit trigger-happy there. A little bit trigger-happy there. Um, the umbrellas look all right. The umbrellas look all right, but I do need to darken perhaps underneath them a touch. Like, I'll show you what I mean. Just a little bit of warmer color mixed with neutral tint, perhaps. You know? Underneath here, like this. There, just like a shade of something. That some of these, like a bit of red mixed with neutral tint there. I might have to lift off some of that paint afterwards. Um... You know, a little bit of, you know, a bit of uh, shade as well. I'm just using warm colors. Yeah, it's difficult. But they, they don't, they're not actually all completely white. Or well, not white, but the not all the same value. The umbrellas have like a, you know, some slight darker bits in them especially here at the base like that so just subtly drop in a bit of darker yellow or something down there okay not much just a little bit like that um this there's actually a tree here i didn't get it in before but there is a tree here that is uh in front of the whole this whole scene and you put that in maybe could stuff it but Let's just try. Um, it may not even look much like a tree, mind you. But with a bit of lifting off work afterwards, I think we should be okay. Um, yeah, another something that interrupts the scene. <laughs> okay. Interrupts the scene here. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Um... So moving on down to the, the figures and all this sort of detail below. And, I, and guys, I'm really simplifying this. You can take more time definitely doing it, but I want to simplify this 
this is your chance to start dropping in some interesting colors. Okay, here's a bit of blue. I want to put in a bit of really light blue for a cerulean blue for some of these figures like that. Um, this figure on the right, maybe a bit of black for the suit or something. That I'm just guessing, you know, that he's wearing a suit. You know, it depends on what you want to do. Depends on what you want to imply in here. I, I think it kind of look good with some sort of suit on, and maybe this one as well. Let's... Ah, oh, damn, I've gotten rid of that blue. Doesn't matter. Um, we can get... We can continue anyway. Uh, so a couple of people just walking along in the back. And the legs... Let's just... See if I can do this quickly without... Overly exaggerating what is happening. Oh, no. That was not the best. Um, scratch off some detail like that, maybe. Okay. Okay, so these look, these two figures, I probably could have done them better. Um, but it is what it is. You kind of just got to accept it. I'll, I might be able to fix it up a bit later. Now, the shadows. This is going to be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Shadows. I wonder if I can get a... if I get some shadows coming on an angle to the right-hand side. And get in a, a bit of a shadow for on, on the, the shade as well and on some of the umbrellas. Or the alternative is to just uh, leave it as it is. Imply the light source coming from directly above, which I think would be safer <laughs> and is probably what i'm actually leaning towards at the moment light source coming from directly above but if you want to be adventurous if you want to be adventurous you can definitely get that shadow moving a bit more to the right um which would mean a lot of the the shadows on the umbrella and stuff would have to be redone Okay, a bit of that underneath that tree, some something that just marks it out in the ground, uh, that circular whatever, you know, where they put the trees. A um, bit of this sidewalk, and and guys, it's just a bit of grey or whatever you have left over. Runs through. Yeah, these figures are a little bit sloppy, the ones on the right. I'm not too pleased with them, but they will do. They will do. Um, you know, and these, like, you can see these, like, chairs and things. Here's your opportunity to kind of just uh, paint them in. In a few little brush strokes. Um tables you know here and there the pencil work that you'd put in before will lay the uh, the general structure of the chairs which then you can imply uh, the rest of the detail you know that could be another chair or something a uh, bit messy but you know no problems another chair there let's have a go another chair there a couple of legs um Uh, I'm not even looking at the reference at this stage. I am just trying to get this in quickly. Um, all right. Underneath the chairs, you're going to get a little shadow, a touch of darkness underneath like this as well. This is just indicating the shadow underneath the chair. Um, yeah. Something like that. Um, there we have it. We got here in the ground just some, you know, sometimes you just get a bit of messiness or the, the road or whatever, a bit of, you know, texture on the road as you can see. There's actually a bit of a perspective here as well, like with the, you know, with the the curb and the the background of this 
area, you can see there's like little, you know, I don't know if we, if this is a good idea to do actually, but, um, let's see. Okay. Okay, not bad, not bad. Um, more detailing on this figure, a bit more color. Now we've got all these people with these figures that are inside the buildings as well, like this sitting down or doing whatever. And this is where you can um, enjoy yourself and just uh, put in some different colors, just whatever you want in there. Have a bit of a play around, add some color. And um, I'm doing this quickly, but you don't have to do it like the way I'm doing it. You can really s sit and detail each of these figures more, but uh, I'm not going to bother too much personally. I just want to get it out the way and imply some figures in here. But um, yeah, not take all day with it. Oh no, I've got in too much. I've gotten some red into my cerulean blue. Let me just... Yeah, that's a bit better. A bit of more cerulean blue. Just needs some... There's a lack of blues in here. It's really a lack of... You know, a touch of blue in places. This is why I was really thinking of putting in a bit of blue for the... Um, a tiny bit of blue for the, the shade up the top. But I'm glad that I've gone with... Yeah, I'm actually glad that I've gone with this uh, red. It looks really cool. Like it, actually. Um, yeah, how do you, what do you guys think so far? Is it working out, do you reckon? What do you think of this scene? I think it's all right. I think we're, I think it you know definitely implies that cafe setting. Okay, lost lost a lot of detail. I'm being quick with it. But at the same time, there's a, there's some character which I like in this scene. There's a consistent style and sharpness to everything which I which I like. Uh, light source, very you know like obvious light source coming from above as well. But it's not like super sharp, as you see in some of my other paintings. This one's like a bit more subdued. This light source. All right. Let me just sometimes you can wet an area like this okay watch scratch off a bit of paint to indicate like something there running through like a tree or whatever do it in all kinds of areas like here as well oh, be careful I've gone stuff that umbrella a little bit no oh, that's no good Mm, let's lift off. Come on, Darren. What are you doing? Ah, there we go. That's better. Um, all right. Let's put a bit of like pinkish color or whatever for the faces. Yeah. There. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'm using one value. The heads, maybe the hands and stuff of some of these figures here. People sitting down at the tables, you know. Put in a couple other people here, maybe. Um, yeah. If you if you're at home and you got the time, yeah. So I, I'd suggest I'd you know definitely spend a bit more time on the figures and. And the uh, the details of these tables and stuff like that. I've gone very quickly and just tried to do them um, in a in a quick fashion. Now there are some little extra details that we can just start putting in, like I, I, it's sort of like the end point of the scene where I pick up dark paint, really dark paint, and 
I will go and drop in some small little details in areas. For example, here, there is some proper like kind of line. Look at that. Okay. On the edge of that shade. Oh. Little one here as well, behind the shade here. All right, just get that in. Um, I may regret that, but but it does give it a bit more structure, a, t a little bit more structure. But again, it does eliminate a bit of that nice softness that I had before. No worries, no worries. Um, always try things, guys. Like, you've got to remember, it's just paint and paper. If it doesn't work out, you can always give it another go. But sometimes you find some amazing little, amazing little things and discoveries, I suppose, when you are experimenting with colors and uh, figuring out what's what whether it, whether something's going to work or not depending on your style of course yeah, and there's sort of details of this building in the back there's some kind of separation in between this building as well just a vertical line running down the page um, maybe i can just put in some small see check this out a little bit of detail for this building like some horizontal lines for that building. Don't know, may or may not work. There's even some horizontal kind of lines running up. Can you see this? This one here, these sort of horizontal lines running on the edge of this building. You know, chuck them in. Why not? While we uh figuring, you know, bringing things out. Um, okay. And really, the last step is uh, just thinking to yourself, well, you know, we got everything's pretty much dried. I can go in and sort of play around with some of this paint, you know, drop in a bit of darker paint in some areas like that. Slowly just create extra details on the top of this tree. Um, there's actually some small leaves on this tree as well that you might want to put in, but it's not 100% necessary. Okay. Bit of dry brush maybe down the side of the tree like this, uh, in areas like that. Um, yep, maybe some more darker sort of little spots like here on this tree here you know I just noticed that there is just some little darker spots that I are uh, missing in this tree yeah you could go without it but you know um, just why not do it why not put it in uh, a bit of hair for the figures a bit of something there maybe for this one as well um, and, and guys, again, this is like a pretty quick um, representation, so don't uh, don't judge me too harshly for this. I just want to indicate the hair for some of these people. A um, bit of dark color. You can use whatever color you want, really. Um, maybe some brown. Some of these other ones like that. Uh, All right, all right. Um, good. So now we know what's uh, now we know what's up. We're going to put in some gouache, a bit of white gouache. Bring this all together and um, see how it looks in the end. Angie's asking, paints grey, charcoal grey. Yeah, so I'm using uh, neutral tint 
up in the top there. But Payne's Grey, honestly, is, is as good if you've got Payne's Grey. If you don't have either of them, just mix your three primary colours together. Mix your three primary colours together and you're going to get a nice grey anyhow. A lot of these colours that, that you end up buying are just mixtures of colours that you already have. Just a convenience. Um, Amanda's asking, white standard poodle. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, I could try that. I could try that. I'm going to pick up a bit of this white gouache here. White gouache is an opaque watercolour paint, which allows you to get in some of these final little highlights and details in here. And uh, actually, I'll dry it off quickly first. Yeah. All right, back to the gouache, back to the white gouache. Small round brush. All right, now the light source is coming from above, but it is a kind of overcast day. But you, you can really just imply some details of these figures quite quickly. Um, shoulders like that. You can even just even go around a, a fair bit of the head if you want. Um, that back of the head and the shoulders right too much i think that these figures just uh, don't know. i'm not quite not a huge fan of these figures actually and the front but um i'm just gonna go with it here's that this figure here as well shoulders and uh the head like that there yeah, these ones just look a little bit off, but, you know, what can you do? Looks okay. Um, sometimes you do get a touch of gouache. Can you see here just a little bit of, like, light hitting the edge of buildings and stuff? You can just touch, tap on an area like this, you know, this um, the umbrella, like that. And just some spots like this. Um... Just little, little highlights that you want to imply, but um, be careful not to overdo it. And not to eliminate that, the, the natural light that's already, already portrayed here. Like that. Windows. No, window frames, like a bit of light, I don't know, in there or something. Okay. More people here. Just a bit of light maybe hitting the shoulders of some of the, the, the heads and the shoulders of some of these figures in here. But really it's it's just, um, it's difficult really to see what exactly is going on there because people are just sitting down and potentially the umbrellas are going to also create a shadow on them. But you know, we've got something in here, just some interesting highlights, which is going to make the scene appear more interesting, uh, more varied in just little speckles of colour here and there, 
I also, one thing I like to do is sometimes mix a bit of, you can pick up a bit of cerulean blue and mix that into my white gouache to get myself in like a, I don't know, like a bit of a, a bluish opaque color in areas of the painting. Um, just like a, a, you know, touch of color here and there. It could be for anything. It could be for the, you know, like a sign or something like that. Um, What else do we have? Yeah, probably the name of the building would be good. Just putting in the name of the building. Pantine. Is that an E? Pantine. Uh, I'm, no, I'm no good at, at my, my writing. My handwriting is horrible. In case you don't realize, I'm not breathing while I'm doing this. But I mean... Okay. I mean, basic, right? That kind of repeats itself here as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, as you can see, I've changed up some things here and there, a bit of experimentation, but I think it's worked out quite nicely, you know, this little bit of blue, I, I just thought, it one, because it's in the building itself, but also I just had an idea, why not put a bit here to, to indicate the, the sky, maybe reflecting through some of the building, because I, I notice here in this corner of the window, it has a bit of blue in there as well, you know. So I just thought I'd do that. Might might be might have stuffed it, but I I think it's okay. Uh, it's always good to to just experiment around a little bit, and you you might end up you might end up um, creating something more interesting. All right, so guys, that's pretty much it. What do you think of today? And how did you go? More importantly, how did you go? This was a challenging scene, but I liked it. I really liked the umbrellas, and I really liked the the um, the kind of busyness, a little bit busy, business of the scene, the lively, I suppose you call it. Okay, it took about an hour, maybe an hour and a and a little to do. Um, I know a lot of you have been enjoying my workshops. Do consider subscribing to my Patreon signing up for my Patreon. It's uh, in the link below the video or in the video description. Um, also like the video, this video here. Um, click the like button and share it with a friend if you got value out of it. That just helps me out. Get the video to more people. It doesn't cost you a cent as well. Um, so yeah, I guess the main takeaways is preserving that light. Preserving that light on top of the shade, on the umbrellas, on the ground a little bit, cutting around those uh, umbrellas and things like that as well. Okay. And um, the figures, I reckon I could have done better, the chairs and all that kind of kind of thing. But I think you get the, yeah, I think you get an idea, certainly, um, certainly get the right idea here with what I've done. Um, the longer you spend on paintings like this, the, the more detail, obviously, you can get it in. And Amanda's saying that not a nice thin line across the top of the red shade uh, of the top to sharpen it up a bit. Yeah, these little lines, it's just two lines there, but it's it brings out that shade a little bit more, doesn't it? It does make a, a big difference. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, looks like you, you're enjoying this one as well. And yeah, we'd like to see see some of your ones as well, Pamela. We, uh, your 
your finished scenes that you've done from this workshop. Uh, we have a Facebook group. If you go to facebook.com slash group slash watercolor mentor, you can upload your paintings there. If you tag me in your post, I will, yeah, basically if you, if you want me to, to give you some, some constructive feedback, just tag me in your post as you, as you upload it and I will get to it. Um, but yeah, today was quite fun. I, I like this. I really like this scene and the fact that we've changed a few things around. Um, you know, certainly if I were to do this one again, I would put more detail into the figures out in the back. Uh, I would probably also shift the scene up a little bit, uh, shift the scene up a little bit more so I could have more figures. Maybe, yeah, it's the detailing on these figures that I think if I had just put in another 10% on the figures, it would have... Uh, contrasted a lot better with the looseness of everything here. So you really have to have contrast here, like the sharper, more detailed tree and the shade and the umbrellas with all the softness and all the the abstract kind of shapes in there. The abstract shapes can be interpreted as anything. So if you have some sharper, more defined objects in there, then those abstract shapes, you know, are going to look more like windows, are going to look more like lines representing the building you know if you have a, a a more hard and fast sort of line line work in there for the other stuff so uh yeah um that's pretty much it for tonight and uh yeah again um thank you for coming along remember to like like the video click the like button share the video with a friend on Facebook, and again, I have a, a whole bunch of courses. I've got a 70 course program that you can go check out in the video description as well as my Patreon. And I've got a lot of different projects in there, much more detailed, much more detailed than this one. And I uh, do go through uh, things in th things in a lot more detail. For example, like values. You know, I have a whole class on values as well, which is important, talking about uh, how to mix up your different dark colors, how to preserve light. Uh, okay, fantastic. Any other questions, guys? Um, yeah, let me know if you have any final thoughts or questions. Otherwise, I think I'm going to probably finish this one off. Uh, I'll give you about 30 seconds or so. Um, and also, guys, if you have suggestions maybe of what, what you think I, I could do for the next workshop, something that might be a bit more popular with people. Let me know. I'm actually running a bunch of surveys to see um, portraiture has come up. So that's something I'm definitely considering doing as well, like uh, a, another portraiture class uh, workshop and, um, yeah, mixing skin tones, stuff like that. Uh, people say that my portraiture is actually a lot better. <laughs> I'm I'm just so uh, I just like painting loosely these days. I don't have a huge amount of patience for portraiture, but at the same time, I'm trying to find a way to paint portraits a lot more loosely. So if I have an excuse, an excuse to do that, um, narrative saying mixing colors. Okay, so that can be a something I can run for my next workshop. Uh, talk more about mixing colors. I could do that with any scene. But maybe I could do like a 10 minute intro in the beginning to talk about mixing colors. Honestly, I mean, I don't really use much colors anyway, as you guys can tell. I just use a few basic colors and even just your primaries will get you by. Um, but I think that I think that's it. I think that's really it. So, uh, guys, thanks for coming along today. And I hope to see you in the next workshop.